vidas. Are we on? Yep. We're on right now? Yep. All right, here we are. Good evening, everybody. Welcome, everybody. This is the God Talk, guys. My name is Michael Mack, and this is my beloved friend, Michael Coran, and we are here each week at this time to talk about God, faith, religion, spirituality, drawing on faith traditions from all around the world. And we'd like to start by thanking you folks for tuning in and thanking especially those friends of ours who are starting to tune in pretty <laughs> regularly. So um, I'm thinking of Yating and Kath and Carol and Steve and Louie and who do, you, who do you have that's watching? Well, uh, well it could be Elizabeth. Uh-huh. Could be Janet. Yeah. Could be Gail. Hi. Thank you guys. Mm. Appreciate your being here with okay. us. And we're going to do a full hour. So this first half hour mm. will be Michael's show, Michael's topic. And the next half hour will be mine. So we have just entered into Advent on this very day. This is December 1st, 2013. And this is the very first day of Advent, uh, Advent being the expectation, the coming of Jesus Christ. And so we spend this month of December preparing for the, for the birth. And Michael, you have some thoughts about that, I understand, yeah? Yes. Take it away. Well, what, what are you thinking? <clears throat> well, I've had these thoughts for a long time and I wanted to see what they mean to you and I and others mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. So the thoughts are um, not unusual when I talk to um, Catholic friends of mine, when they were young especially, mm -hmm. when they hear the story of Yosef and Miriam and Miriam having a messenger, that's what it is in Hebrew, not an angel, and you know, it's translated as angel, but a messenger can be anyone. Mm -hmm. And the messenger telling her, don't be afraid. So this is Gabriel. Gabriel is traditionally the, uh, the messenger of yes. God. In one of the Gospels, it's Gabriel. In, in um, I think, Luke, but not Matthew. Mm -hmm. um, if we have time, we can look. But this Just as an aside, the, um, Gabriel is also the messenger who came to the prophet Muhammad, yes. be, peace be upon him, to yes. give him... Um, the scripture for Islam. And also very physical. Oh, big hugged, no way. Hugged him so much he could hardly he breathe. Could hug, yeah. Yes. Yeah, he thought he was dying. Squeezed the words out of yeah. him. Said, recite, Muhammad. Recite. I don't want to know. I can't do it. Very close to Miriam, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. And yet, and, yet, and she was, of course, as everyone knows, um, uh, engaged to be married to Yosef. Mm -hmm. And he wants to quietly divorce her. Because she's pregnant. Yes, and he hadn't uh, known her yet. Had not known her in that special way. Yes, reminds me of my family. My father wanted to leave also very early. Uh -huh. the, the week my brother Len was born, my father comes to the hospital and tells my mom, I've joined the Navy. I'm going to fight the Japanese, which he preferred rather than our family because it was a very <laughs> challenging family. <laughs> and he could give me kamikaze uh, any day. Yes, over and this he could stuff. sweep up the mines. He was a mine sweeper. Yeah. Like, but the mines in our family were more challenging. Isn't that true of family? And he said he stayed because of the children. He had written her, according to my mom, when he was away in the Pacific, yeah. that he wasn't coming back. But he came back, thank, mm. thank goodness. Mm. Even mm. as difficult as it was, thank goodness, Yeah, for me. Um, <clears throat> I've seen families where the fathers leave, and that seems and that's to be it. harder for the children often than staying in a, in a war zone. Yeah, well, I guess that's, that probably varies from family to family. It's difficult either way. But please, continue yes. with your, and so, your thoughts. The, the heart of it is Yosef is thinking of divorcing her, planning to, mm -hmm. and then it says it appears to him in the dream 
that the messenger comes in a dream. In a dream, he's dreaming this. At least in, this. in Luke. Yes, he's dreaming this, and he believes his dream. Mm -hmm. And as we know, dreams, it could have been he helped create the dream. That's what Freud would say. Yes, or many of us now, too. Mm -hmm. And the dream was, stay with Miriam. Mm. Because she's not pregnant in an ordinary way, but the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. In Hebrew, the Ruach HaKodesh, a special wind blew someone in, really in. Well, I imagine that one of the reasons, see, this doesn't appear in the Gospel of Mark, which was the first written Gospel, yep. uh, nor does it appear in Matthew. Yes, that is in Matthew, it's not in John. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, but the, the early Christians had this problem, I guess you could say, <coughs> because it was commonly known that Mary um, was pregnant before she and Joseph were married. Yes. How, what are we going to do with this? Yeah. How are we going to handle this? And so this gospel was written to address that and other issues that the early church was wrestling with. Uh, the Gospel of Luke being written, I guess, uh, four, maybe 50 years after. Yes, Ma and Matthew maybe a little earlier. Yeah. And Mark the first, which doesn't have it. Right. So, um, so one thing at a time, there's so much here. So the first thing is, instead of forgiving her, I forgive you, Miriam. You know, you messed up bad, but I forgive you because I'm such a forgiving guy. No! way more challenging you did something i just had a dream you did something great you were brave you wild woman you were very brave i'm so honored to have someone so mind staggeringly brave will you stay with me hmm. what a way hmm. to go beyond forgiveness hmm. Hmm. I hope so I to take the event and really put into it an entirely different context, a context in which the ground shifts under, it's like a, an earthquake underneath the story so that we have a completely different way of looking at it. Yes. And a way to, to explain and also, not only to explain, but also to, to explain in a way that advances the faith and advances the, I guess advances the church. I, and the I, family, they, they stayed together. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hope I can do this with my dear friend, Michelle, who left me. Uh-huh. It it's been great. So you need, you need some, you need a story to... I need, yes, I'm, okay. to say not that I forgive you, but wow, you were so brave. And it was so important that you left me. And I'm learning solitude. Yes. I never would have I'm learned. so much better off, well... Yes, just like you being late, <laughs> just you, like you being late, which I missed you. Dude. Yes, yes, I was late, I was late. Michael and I were planning to meet here at 6 p.m. Uh, before our 7 p.m. show to talk about what we were going to do, and I was late. And I felt horrible about being late. And it was, was a great gift. I'm alone. I didn't bring a book. I'm sitting there. I'm feeling... 15 minutes. Feeling alone. Waiting not, 15 minutes for me. Nothing to do, and all kinds of feelings started coming. I'll bet all and kinds of feelings. I'm very glad for those. Yeah. I was feeling... Because, I'm, you, you know, we're usually... This is Cambridge. Everything's programmed. We're, yeah, it's like what time is it? Yes, well, I have to move on. Cleaning the dishes or something. I right? was doing nothing. That chose not to bring a book. Yeah, and I have thank you so much. And was a little disassociating, which I do when I'm in an awkward situation, and noticing that, mm -hmm. and saying I've got to stop disassociating in unpleasant situations if I can. Let me feel my heels on the on the on the floor. Let me close my eyes and feel the couch I'm sitting on, and that helped a lot. I have to share with you, and it, uh, just a short bit corollary to what you were just describing. As I was pedaling over here on my bicycle, knowing that I was late, boy, did I was coming down hard on myself for being late. And there was a good voice inside me saying, just keep going, just do your best. You, you'll, you'll get there when you get there. Just put one foot in front of the other. And then there was the other one that was like, oh boy, you messed up in a big way and you deserve to be punished. You deserve penance, which I suppose is in part what we're doing right here is me doing a little bit of penance. Um, so I had the opportunity to really do what you did. 
and I failed again. Oh, to see how great you were. To see how great I was. Yes, but now you can feel it if you can take it in. I can take it in now. I mean, it's but like... I needed to do the penance in order to do that. Yes, yeah, so maybe we can shorten that penance to tiny, a tiny little breath. Hopefully, we're working mm -hmm. in that direction. And I, I just met one woman. It, it um, astounded me. She said, everything we do is right. There's no right and wrong. Everything we do is God's will. It's astounded me because it was frightening. But there's some truth in it also. There is some truth in it. And that's what's, I suppose that's part of what's frightening about it. Mm -hmm. um, but exactly what the truth is, I think that that's the tricky part. That's the dangerous part. Because if we just simply come down solidly on it's all right. It's all true. We can do anything. No, yes. Help us, O oh Lord. No, I mean, yeah. Augustine said, yeah. love and do what you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a little different. Yeah, very different. But he was um, he was a tough... He was... Uh, and who was this? St. Augustine. Said, Augustine. Okay. Love and do what you will. Yeah. Aquinas said one of the... But this is... It's so... Never mind. I'm not going to go there. Are we going to come to... Are we going to come back to yeah, the... Yeah, come back to the okay. story. Yes. The story of the, the Advent story. The yes. story of the, uh, the birth of Jesus. And so, all of the important people around. So we can around. ask, and, and you can answer this as much as I, if not more. So what's it like being Joseph, Yosef, meaning God will provide Miriam, which means bitter, as well as mistress of the sea? That was a, a hard time to... What's it like to be them? How does that relate to who we are? Well, that's the invitation, I think, of the Gospels and the invitation of all scriptures that we have an invitation into the experience of another. I suppose that's what literature does, but in, the, in a very special way it happens in the scriptures. In, so we have the experience, we have the invitation into the life of Joseph, into the life of Mary, into the life of Jesus, to get a glimpse of what it might be like and how that might relate to, to our own lives. So instead of feeling you're a bastard, right? Because many people probably, since they, as you were saying before the show, knew that Miriam was pregnant mm -hmm. and Yosef was a good man and he couldn't be the man. And, he, and some traditions think he was much older than her. Yeah. And so he was, could have been well considered a bastard when he was growing up in Nazareth. Mm -hmm. And the difference between feeling you're a bastard and feeling you're a son of God is, is somewhat the same as what Yosef did. How can I take the f horrible things that are being told me and that I might feel in myself? And is there another way, as you would say, to see them as beyond ordinary, extraordinary? Mm. Not I forgive, but to something... I mean, to be born a bastard is is quite a challenge. My mother was, as I was telling you, was less like, so now than it used to be. But even yes. even a few decades ago, yes. To so be, my mother, when she was born, my mother was born out of wedlock, mm -hmm. so that would be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Or we can feel with. I'm not going to go there. Okay, so that that's just one question. What? How to take? Certainly the names that are called us and the feelings we have about ourselves and find a perspective, a divine perspective, really, to see it not as horrible and not hiding from the horrible, but seeing that Miriam's behavior was extraordinarily brave, too. Maybe she met someone she really loved, who was maybe her age, and then maybe then comes back to Yosef, true to, true to her packed with him and and he sees that what she did is wonderful how can we do that with the things we have we have done the miracle for me on in that story is how joseph was able to i guess i'm re-saying what you said in a slightly different way that he was able to let go of all that i'm sure he must have been wrestling with at the time and he was able to love her, love his wife-to-be anyway. Um, some would say forgive uh, and to release. Um, the yeah. way that you put it is that he took 
what happened and created an entirely new narrative around it. So or at least be, that's what... Beyond forgiveness. Yeah. What you've done is beyond forgiveness. Yeah. And maybe taking some... I'm sure he was angry and taking those feelings and somehow... I can't, I can't let you go, I can't let you say um, beyond forgiveness, because I think that forgiveness is larger, it's a larger idea than many people give it credit for, that many people hear forgiveness and they say that forgiveness is, uh, okay, you messed up, but, um, yes. but I'm so big, I can, I, can, I can let it go, I can release you, I can release myself. But I think that forgiveness is bigger than that, and forgiveness really is just completely letting go. Letting go of an event, letting go of a resentment, letting go. I'm of... saying I, I agree with that. Okay, but it's even more. It's may I, as you were suggesting earlier, have a new way of seeing and understanding what you do to see that it was extraordinary. I'm not going to hide from it. I'm not going to say it's okay. I'm letting it go. I'm going to see what looked like painful behavior from you is really extraordinary behavior. Well, that's the, that's the invitation to all of us in any event of our lives. Is there a way that we can, whatever experience, whatever we're struggling with, whatever we're wrestling, fighting with, is there a way to see it differently in order to give not only more meaning to our lives, but also to release us from some burden, to release us from some um, tangle, to release us, as the Buddha would say, from suffering. Yes. That pain comes in life because that's the nature of life. But suffering is not necessary. Pain is necessary, but suffering is not necessary. Suffering is what we take on because we can't let go of something. We can't forgive something. We can't release it. I um, wrote a poem which, um, after I've learned from all the messy things I've done. Remember in Hebrew, sin means missing the mark? Missing the mark, and boy, we've all and if missed it, well, marks. And maybe you feel, feel this way. Then I think, oh my, look, my all of a sudden my past, there's an old expression, my boss had it, Jim Smith, on his bulletin board, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. Hmm. And now I'm saying, oh my, after I've learned from the, you know, unbelievable mistakes, we won't have time <laughs> to go into that. We could spend the rest. <laughs> we could spend the a rest of the it. decade. Yes, although I'm on a website that invites us to do that. Um, then I say, oh my, that poor, you wouldn't understand this, that poor, painful, pain kid, confused, arrogant, put downing out of his arrogance because he didn't want to be lower than everybody else. He, wow, look at all the things he's done. Yeah. And I could, wow, yeah. so I go back, have a new movie. I kind of wish <laughs> that I could, and I suppose we can, in, in our imaginary, in, in, our, in, our, in our inner cinema, we can do this, but I would love to be able to go back and whisper into the ear of the young, of the boy that was myself or the young man that was myself saying, you know, you have no idea what is awaiting you. Wow. It's going to be much better than you can even imagine. Yes, right that's now. true. Yes. It's going to be... Because of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Because of the things you've done. Yeah. Because yeah. of your life right now, which you look at right now and say this is horrible and, and let me get the heck out of here. It's this very thing that you're fighting, that you're resisting, that will free you, that will release you that will open doors for you. Uh, what would be an example of, of something you're resisting that will open the door? Well, uh, the two big events of my life when I was very young, my mother's mental illness. Uh, she was diagnosed with schizophrenia when I was five years old. It was a very challenging, it was very challenging to grow up in that household. Yep. And uh, the other big experience of my early life was uh, being uh, molested by a, a number of individuals, one of them, uh, parish priest and it would take me years decades even before I was to be able to look at these stories and to create something with them to create poems to create plays um, that I'm now performing regularly um, and that address these great difficulties but also offer um, a way out 
offer a offer a redemption. And it's in the artistic process itself of taking this material and very much like the story that you were telling earlier about Miriam, um, taking the story, taking the facts and seeing the facts in a different way. And so as I tell the story of my uh, boyhood or my young adulthood, I am seeing it now through a lens that I simply did not have available to me then. But with these years and with this perspective and with all of the beautiful people that I've come to know over the years, I've been able to look at both of these experiences, my mom's life and, and my early sexual experiences in a very different way not only look at them in a different way, but share them with others in a way that is meaningful both to me and to them. And what does it mean to look at them in a different way and make it meaningful? I mean, people have been This is the abused, mystery. Myself included, we've been very abused, but that does offer, it's hard to talk about, opportunities. That is the mystery and the marvel of the creative process. When I start to tell a story uh, or write a story about something that happened to me when I was very young, I've got the basic, I, I remember the basic thread, the basic narrative, but something is going to happen in the process of that creative act that will shift. Something will shift in my mind and I will be able to see something that I didn't see before. It's not unlike the therapeutic process in which you go over um, you remember and uh, walk through early experiences, but with the help of a therapist or with a guide on this hero's journey, mm -hmm. you are able to see them in a different way, see them as the adult that you are now rather than as the child you and were this, then. And I find the screams that are still in me mm. can, if I direct them, especially writing poems or mm -hmm. living them, can turn, can fuel my dreams, those screams. The screams can fuel your dreams. Yes. They your your really night do. dreams? The... Uh, my life dreams. Life dreams, okay. Including, right, as you do too, we both write about these mm -hmm. things. And they're very, it's very powerful to do that. As the story in the Gospels did. Yeah. They took, they took this, they took a problem in the same way a that you and I took a problem. A huge yeah. challenge. And I'd love to, but well, we have running out of time in this show, to begin to ask what it was it like to be Yosef and Miriam and Jeshua, the little child. I identify with him in the womb hmm. because um, my family, my mother and father really hated each other for good reason, for good reason. Good for them. Don't fuck with my mom or dad. And and when I was conceived, as my father said, as an accident, they were trapped in hell. And so okay, I... Okay, I, ha I have to... What do you mean by good for them? I, I mean, it, well, the, in the way we're saying now, I mean, good for my mother for hating my father in some ways. Loving him too, but hating the way women were treated then and okay. hating the, okay. the life that she was trapped in. Okay, so um, focusing on justice, is that what you're suggesting? To, to, I mean, the, the power that she had to fight him. Mm -hmm. I mean, eventually, when they were very old in their 70s, he holds his, her hand in my presence and says, honey, we wasted 40 years of our life fighting, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And that was very... That's... Amazing. And and she always loved him. That's a moment that, to remember, yes, yeah. Yes, that, um, I'm, I'm losing my... Oh, but I was identifying, I only have a two... So I was identifying even in the womb, this is my imagination, just as Jeshua in his existence is separating this engaged couple, Yosef and Miriam. Hmm. He's separating them. Hmm. He's... And he said we were talking about the, the mere fact of his being. As in his bones and flesh and blood, those crucial things for him, the mm -hmm. blood and the flesh, right? In his flesh and bones, his existence to begin with was to separate, to in some ways destroy love, just his existence. 
And he was, in, in, in that way, he was a harbinger for his ministry later on when he would say, I come not to bring peace, but the sword. I will be separating, you know, fathers from mothers and, 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 and uh, sons from, I, I don't remember. Sons from fathers. Was, okay. Yes, and parents, yes, so he knew so that. So from the very beginning. He had to work through that. Yeah. He really had to work through that. To, um, to, but he, that was in him. And what to do with that? He needed something similar to what his father, jo Joseph, did. Hmm. How can I handle this? You know this, too, I, it's in my show, but the hara you feel in your blood and your, and your flesh. How to handle that? What to do when you've, you... And the Catholic Church works with this often. If you feel that I'm basically sinful, I'm basically ruined from conception on, right? Original sin. Oh boy, is that a topic for another show? And what he does with it, what he does with it, we will next next week or in the weeks to come, because we're gonna now with those questions, but hopefully hanging in the air, hopeful, unanswered. But hopeful, because we've seen how different ways of looking at things can take the screams and turn them to dreams. Hmm. So, um, thank you very very much for joining us. May all your screams. Help fuel your dream. Our, may all our dreams fuel our dreams. <sighs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we will be back in three minutes for the next episode. 